the sun on a star chart. We're going to try and answer quite a few questions on this video. Uh, probably not in very much depth, but it'll give us some idea. First of all, what is the ecliptic? Why are certain constellations best viewed in certain months? Where is the prime celestial meridian? When do the summer and winter solstices and the two equinoxes happen and why? What are the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn? And what is the zodiac? So there's quite a lot to do. Let's get cracking. Now this is a star chart. Um, this particular star chart actually went to the moon and back on Apollo 11. Or rather this is an image of it anyway. Couldn't get hold of the real one. So uh, a star chart shows us where all the stars are. It's a chart of the stars. The position of the stars doesn't change relative to each other. If you came back in 500, 1000 years and made another star chart it would be exactly the same. The position of the stars doesn't change their declinations, their right ascensions relative to each other they do not change. The stars appear to move when we look at them because the earth is rotating but relative to each other the position of the stars doesn't change um, except for one. There is one star which uh, throughout the year its position does change and the star I'm talking about is of course the Sun and if we add the Sun to this star chart and there it is. Okay so we see May, June, July, August September. So depending on what time of the year it is, uh, the Sun is in a different place. It has a different right ascension, a different declination. Uh, the path of the Sun is called the ecliptic. Now the blue line on this diagram is the celestial equator, which is our zero declination. Uh, the celestial equator is directly above the real equator. Now the path of the Sun, which is the dotted line called the ecliptic, you'll see that it is actually curved. You'll see that they're minus 23 and a half degrees declination, zero declination, then its declination is getting bigger, 23 and a half degrees, then it gets smaller again. Now why is this happening? And it is, it is of course because the Earth's axis of rotation is tilted by about 23 and a half degrees. Okay, so the Sun doesn't actually follow a weird path. Um, it's just because of the tilt of the Earth, then the Sun appears to follow this curved path. Okay. Now, uh, why are certain constellations best viewed in certain months. Well if you see now the Sun is just going through Gemini. So if the Sun is in Gemini and supposedly if you were born then you would be a Gemini if you believe in that kind of rubbish. If the Sun is in Gemini then that means that during the day um, Gemini is in the sky so you can't see it in the sky because it's daytime. The best time to see Gemini in the sky would be around December because the Sun would be nowhere near Gemini. It would be 180 degrees away. Okay so if you want to see Gemini really really well then the best time would be now because the Sun is nowhere near Gemini. And that means if you go out at night time in December, there's Gemini in the night sky. Some constellations are good winter constellations, such as Gemini. Others are good summer constellations for the same reason. Uh, where is the prime celestial meridian? This is a bit like our zero of longitude. Only we're not talking longitude here, we're talking right ascension. 
and it is where the ecliptic and the celestial equator cross each other which is just on the very right hand side of this picture uh, it's called it has a name that point is called the first point of Aries which is a bit weird because it's not in Aries it's in Virgo but nevertheless the point where the ecliptic crosses the celestial equator when the Sun is on its way up is our celestial prime meridian and that is our zero of right ascension uh, when do the summer and winter solstices and the two equinoxes happen and why well the summer solstice is then which is about about June the 21st there we have an equinox around September the 21st December the 21st is our winter solstice back up to March the 21st there or thereabouts is our other equinox the vernal equinox okay so the equinox is when day and night are equal 12 hours each the summer solstice is the longest day that's when the Sun is highest in the sky that's when the Sun has the its biggest declination um, the winter solstice is when the Sun has its smallest declination and that happens in December and that's when days are shortest what are the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn well um, if you imagine you lived within a, a within 23 and a half degrees of the celestial equator that means that there is a possibility at some time in the year the Sun could be directly overhead okay so if your latitude is plus or minus 23 and a half degrees then the Sun could be directly overhead on a particular day throughout the course of a year I know I haven't explained that well but there's a, another diagram we're going to see after this which explains it a bit better what is the zodiac well the zodiac is a band which is about plus or 10 degrees above and below the ecliptic and it contains the 12 constellations that the Sun passes through throughout the course of the year interestingly there are actually uh, 13 constellations but never mind don't tell any astrologers about Ophiuchus so plus or plus or minus 10 degrees above and below the ecliptic is a band which is called the zodiac so here's my other amazing graphic now what is this this is from the point of view of the earth throughout the year um, I said that the Sun would appear lower and higher in the sky so that's that is December there December and then coming up again to the vernal equinox in March and oh summer's coming very nice and then in June we have the summer solstice and then days start getting shorter again and there we go there's the autumnal equinox okay so if you can imagine your declination is plus or minus 23 and a half degrees then the Sun could be overhead if you lived in the Tropic of Cancer then the Sun could be overhead during the summer if you lived in the Tropic of Capricorn which is in the southern hemisphere then well in their summer oh that sounds like my phone going so um, subscribe have a look at the website go to answer the phone bye